Land Rover Defender roof bars. We've got those fitted, we've done the video for that and we'll put that up there somewhere. Um, but that just gives you these sort of front to back linear rails. And they've got these little cutouts in and we are gonna do a video today on the crossbars that go, that fit into these little cutouts here. And they go over to the other side and you can lock them in position and then you can put your surfboard, mountain bike, bits of wood. It's bits of wood for me and plasterboard. <laughs> You're more mountain bikes than surfboards, Tyler. Oh, but my middle-aged dream is <laughs> plasterboard and 4x2. Right, we're waffling. So we are going to show you how to do that. We've never done it before, so we're making it up. Right, we've got one. We've ordered one. There you go. This is the part number here. Now, there are two part numbers, apparently. Short wheelbase for the people with the Defender 90s, which isn't out yet, I don't think. Yeah. And long wheelbase for people like me with the Land Rover 110. So this is the part number for the long wheelbase 110. And we haven't opened these. So we are gonna have a look now. I got in trouble with Land Rover for tearing into something the other day. <laughs> Apparently that broke a aluminium skid plate, which was total nonsense, but. Right. If I complain to them and things are broken, they're, they're now analysing my unwrapping technique. Um, I better behave myself. It's only a defender, you've got to be fragile. Yeah. Or well, Mr. Skywalker, that's his code name. I've been given a handler at Land Rover head office just to make sure I behave myself and don't upset anybody. But he is looking after me, so I, I mustn't complain. Right, so what have we got, Tyler? So we have had a read of the instructions, but let's have a look. So Now, apparently, the key to this is a sticker right so this is the sticker now <laughs> why they do it so small amuses me so i'm going to use and the key to it, this sticker is this tiny little arrow here and this means this is the front bar this is the front of the car this is the back of the car and this bar is the front so no why they just can't write <laughs> front on here and this barcode we'll try that in a minute but i think that just takes you to the fitting instructions website um, so there we go. And you also got some loading information and some other stuff. But this is the front. Now, I want to see what the difference between the front and the rear is. Because we like to know things. Right, what else have we got? Some strips. Now, strips. Now, apparently on the fitting instructions, we'll have a look. These had different... It wasn't two of the same. And I reckon these are going to be different lengths. But let's have a look. I reckon there was... Mm. Mm, not a lot of difference in those two because normally no. it says part A times two, but it didn't. Yeah. It was like an A and a B. So I'm always dubious whether it is right. So we've got those. All right, and we've got this big tool. Tool. That is monster. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. That is a beast of a tool. <laughs> Keys. Keys. Four keys. Mm. Four candles. You know that sketch, don't you, Tyler? Uh, yeah. Yeah, four keys. Like, not Two four Ronnies. Right, uh, Google. I right. think that was before I was born, though, to be it honest. It was before you yeah. were born. I think that's part of my induction. Everyone who comes in the workshop, I... Right, hold on. Well, I don't want... Be well, careful. That is sort of intertwined, like... That's a cunning bit of... It's quite well packed. It is quite a nice bit, and... Environmental, we like that, don't we, Tyler? Cardboard, not too much. Oh, you've got, you've got useless instructions to take you to the website. Right, here we go. Right, so let's hope. Right, let's get that out of the way. Wow. Right, now let's hope this little picture here shows the rear. It does, right? The little arrow is that tiny little arrow. That is just right. So let's have a look. Let's put these next to each other, Tyler. Let's get them lined up exactly the same. Different right, they both They both say Defender on the front. They both look the same. They've both got keys. Right, and if I line those up exactly there, right. So, as I suspected, one is clearly longer. And that was the front one, wasn't it? Double check, front one. Yeah. Yes. Which makes sense. Because when you look at the Defender, it's quite narrow at the back. I, I was yeah. discussing this, weren't we, Tyler? Well, the roof quite, is. The roof is. Definitely. It's quite fat at the yeah. front. So, that doesn't surprise me that the front one is a different length. To the, and that probably means that on the 90, I reckon the 90, the front of the car is the same. So, I reckon the front will be... But I reckon it probably only gets half as narrow. So, I reckon if we had the 90, the rear bar would be only slightly smaller. 
but I'm guessing. Right, what worries me now, Tyler, is if I've got one long one and one short one, have they just given me two long rubber strips? You've got to cut them to length. Look at that, you see, they they clever look. So, yeah, don't get stressed about which one fits. You've got to... Now, these, this is obviously just a, a, a rubber extrusion that you just put in. But you can put T-bolts in here, which sort of slide in. You've got a little cut out here, obviously, and you put them in, you slide it in for your accessories, your mountain bike stuff and that. And then you have to cut this into multiple strips where you have your bolt coming up, if you get what I mean, Tyler. Yeah. yeah. And so, so this you can sort of cut about, right. Right, 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 now. So not only have you got to work out which is front and back, you've got a bar, you've got to work out, apparently, which way the bar goes on the cut. And I was saying before we get these, Tyler, do we think, so they, they do have a slight, it's hard to see the profile really, isn't it? Mm. But they definitely got a thicker side and a thinner side, haven't they? Would you agree, Tyler? Yeah, That definitely. is thicker than, um, and you can see. It's so we've now got to work out. Now it said, it said this label should always be on the right hand side of the car. Yeah. That was a bit, so let's, so if this is the front bar and that's on the right, so it looks like the thick bit of the bar should always be to the front, yeah? Yeah. Then, and I guess that makes more, I don't know, is it? I'm trying to work out the aerofoil dynamicness of it. So if you lose that sticker, you're put but, but you're not, you're fine, because we've told them the time. Yeah. We've told them the thick bit goes to the front and the thinner bit goes to the front. have to watch this video. When all the stickers have fallen off, people will be thanking me. Right. Okay, so we've got that. That's the front with the front to the front. That's the back with the wider bit to the front. And let's just check both our labels. Yeah, both the labels do go on that side. Right. Right, we are confused. Right, now, so obviously it says this is the front of the car. It doesn't look like a Defender. I don't know what car that is. It almost looks Jaguar or something. Got, right. Um, now it says... Make sure the label is located on the right side of the crossbar when the crossbar is correctly orientated. Now, to me, right side means the right side of the car. So, but look, so this is what I was telling you earlier. This was the long bit at the front. But I think this is wrong. Right, because if this is correctly orientated, this label is here, look, and this is the right side of the car, isn't it, Tyler? That's yeah. the right side of the car. So, to me, that's it. But of course, if you look from the front, that's the left side. You go and look from the front <laughs> side. I'm on your left now, aren't I? So, but, but that would be bonkers. Right, so why do I think it's wrong? Right, two reasons. When you look at an aerofoil bar, it's normally got a blunt rounded side at the front, and then it tapers like a wing, slick at the rear. And this looks blunter at the front and rear. So, so I think it should be the other way round. And also, if you look, if you look here, this little bump is the giveaway. So you've got the key, I'm doing this blind, and the, the bump, we've got it with the label on the right to the rear. But when you look at his picture, the, if this is really a reflection of this here, then the bump is clearly to the front of the key. So. So, right, why else do I think it's wrong? Because if you look up here, if we can do this without blinding the light, Tyler, if you come around here, right, my front arrow is now pointing backwards when I've got the label. Whereas if I spin it round and put it on the left side, right, I've now got the front pointing to the front. So I think they go this way. I've then got the blunt side to the front, which I think is more aerodynamic. So I think... For those people that are watching, I'm now going to re-say, and I'm going to write to Land Rover, hello Mr. <laughs> Skywalker, you need to clarify this, it's not clear. I think the short edge goes to the front and the long edge goes to the back. We happy with that, Tyler? Yep. Right, right, let's crack on. Right, enough of the front rear debate, so now we need to fit this rubber strip. Now I got into another debate, and a discussion with Tyler, we're talking about vortex-induced things. I'll so if you have, I'll bore everyone quickly, if you have wind flowing over a cylinder or a circular thing, what will happen is called vortex-induced vibration. This will start to go as you go in the wind. It will start to rapidly vibrate like this. But 
if you put a little spiral, a little helix around the outside there, it will stop that dead. So this is the roof antenna off my Astra. Um, and people think it's a wire communicating, but it's not. That little wire spiraling around is to stop it vibrating. And it's, it's just a weird thing, right? Um, and I was saying to Tyler, do you think these little grooves going this way are to reduce the vortex? from as the airflow is going over this to stop this vibrating and reduce the noise because if you put that side by side you can see that the top surface would indeed have things sloping don't know maybe Land Rover will tell me right so enough of that he does digress doesn't he Ty? <laughs> we never get anything done here because Simon's always going on about something tangent tangent Elise came home from school yesterday that's my daughter and uh She's doing maths A level and she's got a line she draw with a pen on there and, and it says tan line. But if she hasn't drawn a straight line, she's then drawn the tan graph on it. She <laughs> thinks that's funny, but there you go. Right. So they say we can cut this to length. Key, thank you. Right, wonder there you go. Wonder what happens if you mess it up. Before we get to the end, put that there. Uh, right. So we now have the rubber strip with vortex reducing pattern on the top. Right. Now, we're ready to go to the car, aren't we, Tyler? Yep. Right, so let's have a look. So we've got the front to the front. Let's check which bar it is. This bar is, that. I think it says we've got to put the front one on first, doesn't it? Let's say, put the front one on first. No yeah. idea why. Front left. Right, let's get the stools in position and let's go up to the roof. Right. So before you go up on the roof, we've, we've just had a play and we've got a couple of tips for you. So I left this dangling down with the key in and it sort of scratched my paintwork. So although the instructions don't recommend it, you can squeeze these in, right? Because you're just going to end up scratching your car, right? And they should just pop out, okay? So I would take both of those out. Let's do that quick. There you go. Right, so that's both of those out. Get yourself a China graph pencil because we'll find that handy. Right, and also let's understand how the mechanism works. So there's, so we've got this, this floating sort of square oblong pad here, and you can see that's linked to that bolt on the inside there. Right, so that's the bit we've got to locate, you'll see on the roof. But we've also got a secondary mechanism. And when I pull this, this little bit here, it's got two little pulls on it so you can pull it. You'll see this fires, if I get that out of the way, you see this fires, and that's when we dock into the little location tab. So we've got to make sure that as we insert it, we keep this pulled back so it's in line with this, then it engages, then we slide it along the rails to where the little opening is, and then that fires out. So that's the mechanisms we're looking at. It's no more complicated than that. Um, so you've got the, everyone's got it now. Right. <laughs> So we've got that bit at the front. Right, you jump up on your side, Tyler. I'll pass this across to you. Right. Okay. Now, what I've done on your side, let me just explain quickly, is you've got like a larger cutout, which is your insert or access area. And I've put the white pen on it for you so you can sort of see it there, Tyler. Um, and that's where we've got to drop it into. And then if you look further back, Tyler hopefully point out to you, and that's yeah. why I'm on the roof, um, you've got the lock. And that's where that little spring-loaded plunger will fire into and lock it into position. Actually, let me come around for that. When you've got the clip on, it's kind of tricky. Because what you've got, so what I suggest you do is draw a line in line with the center of the lock location with a China graph pen here and then what you'll know is when that central bolt is lined up as you slide it along with this mark because you you can't see the cat anymore you'll know it's in the right place so that will just save you a lot of messing about in theory you should just slide it and it fires in but it it didn't work quite like that for us did it Tyler no right so I'll leave you with Tyler I'll go around the other end right let's have a go Tyler so let's try and get the slot in now bear in mind we've got to pull back on those two pins at the same time okay. so have you got those pulled back as well Tyler you're yeah two, yeah they're pulled back now pull back now and then we need to just keep them back as we slide it back 
and then it should fire in when it gets to its correct location. You probably haven't got enough hands. Let me come and do yeah. that side for you. Okay, so yeah, we, if you pull this back, you need and make sure that if you if it's tight, make sure that this this central bolt give it a wiggle, and then you should be able to move it back. I'm gonna have to go and move the other side a bit now, and then when it gets back to the correct location. Uh, you should be set to go now, Tyler, shouldn't you? Yeah. Oh. There we go. So that's fired. So there we go. Sorry. That's that's fired in now. So you can check that that's secure, and those two have fired in. So obviously, when if you need to remove it at any time, you'll have to loosen that nut and then pull that, and you can move it but make sure it's fired in and push back. Right, so what we now have to do is use our monster man key. It's humongous. Um, and, we, and you need to loosen one side. Sorry, you need to tighten, so you turn it clockwise, one side. So I've already tightened the other side, but not fully. It said just get it firm, not tight. Now, then come over to your second side. And apparently if we, it says the instructions say, if we keep turning and do it tight, it will click. So we're going to listen for a click. I don't know what's going to click. Something. Something. No click yet, Tyler. Click it did. Something so obviously clicked. there's some clickaging thing there that you know you've got it tight enough and it's clicked, which is cool. We like that. We like that, Tyler. So then obviously you've got to go and do your other side and make sure that is completely tight. And then it's just a question of putting your cover on. So you've got to hook the two hooks back in, flip it up. Let's do that. I'll go and grab it quickly. Oh, Tyler's got it there already. Everyone should have a Tyler. Right. Ah, the other thing. Right. If you're going to do this and you're about to go and do it on your car and you watch the video, put your suspension down in the low mode. And we'll show you another little trick as well. The low, we low again? mode. The low, low mode. How low can you go? Right. So that does a funny sort of mechanism. So obviously, make sure your key's upright. And then put that on. That seems to be almost closed. And then, uh, hold on, or not. Ah, sorry, okay. my bad. Make sure your key is flat. Insert, turn it vertical, take out. There we go, that is the roof bars fitted on a Land Rover Defender. Right, let's show you in the low, low mode. So obviously you can do low mode in there, but, if you want a little bit of extra lowliness, what you can do is here somewhere, you've got this little up down button. And if you press this, if you go back to it, you can see we should get some extra. Right, there you go. It's, it's not a huge amount, but it's a little extra. Something. And may make fit in the roof rails. We're going to fit the rear roof rail. It's a bit garbled and rambled, but hopefully that's helped you fit the roof bars, roof cross bars on your Land Rover Defender. Good luck with that.